Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about that a number of you have asked me about and that is uh, issuing a partial refund when you receive a uh, questionable return. What are the rules? What are you allowed to do? And how does it all work? So without any further ado, let's go. So in Q4, uh, you get more sales than normal, but along with more sales usually means more returns. And sometimes those returns don't work out the way you planned. In, a, in an ideal situation uh, with a return, uh, there's a problem, whether it's your fault or the customer's fault, uh, the return is sent back to you. Uh, you get the same item that you sent the customer uh, in the same condition that you sent it to the customer and you issue a full refund back to the customer per the terms of your return policy. And if, for those who don't have a return policy and have yours sent for no returns, well, just know that if someone wants to return your item bad enough, they can select uh, item not as described uh, as the reason for the return and uh, you're gonna to have to accept the return. But before I get into partial refunds when you're dealing with a return and when you can and can't use them and how you use them, uh, it's important that we talk about uh, your seller status because it has a lot to do with your options. And based on your seller status, uh, your policies have to be set accordingly to be able to take advantage of the uh, what is called the refund tool uh, when you're dealing with a situation that calls for a partial refund. And so ideally, if you are a top rated seller, to be considered a top rated seller, you have to uh, have standing on eBay for at least 90 days as a seller. And within the last 12 months, or any period within the last 12 months, you have at least 100 transactions that sells as an eBay seller and uh, over $1,000 in sales during that period. And as long as you keep your metrics, your uh, return metrics uh, under the, what is called very high, so if you're high or lower in your returns, meaning that you don't uh, have a lot of returns, you're, you know, that's as a result of your uh, listings being accurate, your photos being clear, and your descriptions also being accurate, uh, you then would qualify to be a top rated seller. So your average rated seller who doesn't have that kind of activity, uh, maybe your returns are too high, uh, you would be considered as above standard. That's the terminology for that level of seller. And so if you're top rated seller or above standard, uh, there's different conditions that allow you to utilize the uh, eBay refund tool when you are dealing with a return. And uh, I'm going to go over that. So let's just assume for a second you sell an item to somebody and uh, everything seems fine, but you receive a message from that customer uh, a week later stating that, uh, you know, they would like to return the item because there's a problem with it. And they go through eBay and uh, they select, let's just say item not as described. And so they send the item back and you receive it, you open it up and you realize this isn't the item I sent them. Uh, I sent them something totally different than this. Uh, and that's happened to me before. Or let's say they return the same item, but they uh, don't send the accessories. They just send the, uh, the item itself. Or let's say they don't return the original retail packaging. All of those things have happened to me over the last year and a half. So when those things happen, you can utilize the eBay partial refund tool. So when you go to process the return, so when you go into returns and you go to process the return, um, it'll give you an option to deduct up to 50% of the actual sale price if the buyer paid additional shipping. So let's say your shipping was uh, charged to the customer uh, over and above the actual sale price you will also have the option of uh, refunding or not refunding uh, that original shipping 
charge. Now, if your shipping is built in, you offer free shipping, then um, you know there's nothing you can really do about the original shipping charge, but you can deduct up to 50% uh, from the actual price of the item. So if you have a $50 item, you can deduct up to $25, depending on, you know, uh, is the damage to the item uh, or the missing accessories or is the uh, missing uh, retail packaging uh, valued at half of the uh, retail that the customer paid you. Now, that's subjective. So you have to provide, whenever you are adjusting the, the refund, you actually have to provide an explanation. There's a little box that you go in and uh, type in, it's required, you have to type in why you're adjusting the amount uh, of the refund to the buyer. And so you need to justify that. And so once you've done all that and uh, you're happy with the amount that's selected and most of you, if you have a swapped out item that you're uh, receiving, you're not happy with doing this at all. But uh, it's our only recourse and so once you're done, you just select refund buyer and then uh, the message goes to the buyer. Uh, the buyer has 10 days to accept or dispute the refund amount that you are offering them. And so that you'll notice that uh, in, in our example, that $50 item, you refund 25. Well, that other 25 is supposed to go back to your managed payments account, but it will not go back to the managed payments pending balance until the customer accepts that refund. Now, if, uh, you know, like a lot of customers, they don't see the message, they'll never accept the refund. And so your money is sitting in limbo for uh, 10, 10 business days until that money uh, is then uh, clears into your account. What happens is eBay opens a case after 10 days in your favor and that money, that $25 in this particular example, is sent to your account. Now, going back to what I was talking about, why is it so important for you to be either top rated seller versus an above standard seller? And the reason is this, according to eBay's seller protection policy, if you are a top rated seller who offers 30 day returns, then you can utilize this refund tool whenever you encounter an issue. Whereas if you are an above standard eBay seller, uh, maybe there's things that's preventing you from becoming top rated seller. You have to actually offer 30 day free returns in order to get this privilege. So it is very important that you really work on becoming a top rated seller. You don't have to offer 30 day returns as a top rated seller to get that benefit. Whereas all other sellers that are above standard must offer 30 day free returns. So that's the difference. Just keep in mind, however, that it is not justifiable to uh, deduct return shipping fees or even the cost of your shipping the item to the customer. Maybe you feel that uh, they there's nothing wrong with the item. They misrepresented the return. Uh, there is a remedy for that. If you are a top rated seller, you have to contact eBay. If you feel like the customer has misused returns, misrepresented the return there's nothing wrong with the return yet they stated that uh, there was as a top rated seller you can contact ebay and ask for a six dollar shipping credit now for larger items that's nothing uh, pretty much uh, anything more than you know first class packaging um, you're not going to be covered for so six dollars is all you're going to get back in that scenario and again if you are uh, above standard that that courtesy is not given to you as an above standard seller. You have to be a top rated seller to get that benefit. As far as returns, uh, customers uh, have not 30 days. If you have a 30 day return that is set in your policy, customers actually have 35 days to return the item. So that's 30 days plus an additional five days that eBay allots them uh, for that item to be uh, shipped back. And so it's, it's the way they explain it, it's a safeguard. Uh, they don't want to close a return unless they're sure that the item has not been sent back to you. Now, if you've purchased a label through eBay for the actual uh, return label for the customer, 
uh, that label doesn't get charged to your account until it's used. So if the customer does not use the return label, they never send the item back, then that label is not charged to your account. Now here's one last thing that I think you guys need to know about processing a return. If you encounter a problem with the return that requires you to utilize uh, this refund tool, uh, do not under any circumstances report the buyer until you have gone through this process and issued them a refund minus the deductions using the refund tool. The reason is, is if you go in and you report the buyer prior to uh, processing your partial refund, uh, what's going to happen is because you've essentially opened a case with eBay about the buyer, it removes the refund tool altogether from you being able to go in and deduct what you were planning on deducting from that refund. It's happened to me twice. The first time, I didn't know anything about it. I learned my lesson. The second time, um, I just wasn't thinking. And as soon as I reported the buyer for sending back a different item, uh, as soon as I hit that button, I realized I messed up. And so I had to call eBay and we worked something out after contacting the right person to where they actually went in and uh, did the, the refund on my behalf. Now, most reps won't do that. And it's hard to find a rep in the managed uh, payments department who would be willing to do that. I just happened to get lucky. And so uh, just keep that in mind that do not open a case um, at all because it will mess that up. Now sometimes the buyer will open a case. Uh, one particular situation I had was an elderly person. They were having issues uh, printing the uh, return label from their computer. So they contacted eBay and eBay for whatever reason they opened a case and uh, in doing so uh, if I had you know receive the item in in a different condition or you know any of the reasons why I would use the refund tool it wouldn't have been available to me so I contacted eBay and I let them know that uh, I didn't appreciate that at all but you know what I had to do in that particular situation eBay required me to go in buy a label on my own and I had to actually email or send through the eBay system uh, that particular label that I just bought at full retail, mind you, uh, I wasn't able to utilize any of the eBay discounts that's afforded to most return labels. So uh, I wasn't happy about that. I let eBay know about it. They pretty much told me it's the cost of doing business and I just need to, to you know, suck it up. So, you know, there's a, a lot of different scenarios that pop up with, um, dealing with returns. Now this scenario is regardless of whether you're in managed payments or still on PayPal. Uh, just know that if you're refunding a customer and you're in managed payments, 30 cents is not coming back to you. It's forfeited. eBay keeps it. And while it may not seem like a lot, uh, it adds up. Um, if you are a PayPal customer, I think the 2.9% fee that uh, they initially charged you uh, as part of the sale or processing the, the payment uh, is retained by them and will not be returned to you. So I hope that this information gives you some more clarity on uh, the refund tool. Uh, for those of you who just still aren't clear on uh, this particular policy, uh, you certainly can uh, send me a, a message, uh, put your remarks down below. Uh, send that question. I'll be glad to, to answer it if I have uh, the answer. But also, if you're interested in looking up this information, you can go to Help and Contact, which is uh, at the top of the eBay page, and type in uh, Seller Protection Policy, and it will explain uh, most of what I discussed in this particular video. Please do me a favor, if you benefited from this material or you just simply enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. Please, while you're at it, consider subscribing to my channel and hit that notification bell icon so when I come out with a video, usually twice a week, uh, you will be notified of that video. So as you guys know, I try to put two, two to three videos out per week 
And with the Thanksgiving holiday coming up, uh, it's probably not going to happen. I'm going to be doing a lot of cooking, uh, spending some time with family, and I just don't know if I'm going to be able to come out with a video uh, this week other than the one you're watching now. So again, I will try to put another video out this week, but if I don't, uh, you should see something from me uh, one week from today. So let's hope that this is a busier sales week than normal with Black Friday coming up and Cyber Monday uh, just a week away. And so guys, just keep plugging away, keep uh, listening, keep making those sales because flipping ain't easy. Have a happy Thanksgiving from my family to yours. And with that, we'll see you next Monday.